Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. I came up with a long list of everything animals can teach us. Heed your instincts, cherish your rituals, cooperate, savor the good times, abide with challenges, make time for rest and play, love without condition, release the past and the future. There are so many animal lessons. The very first one that occurred to me, pay attention. Pay attention as in this thing the military calls situational awareness the potentially life-saving attention to our surroundings. Guess where the military learned all about it? Their training was all designed based on observing animal behavior. Pay attention. Animals are born with it, meaning we, also animals, are born with it. But somehow, we forget. Bad things ensue. The situational awareness directive is to watch your six, meaning that we should be engaged with our five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting, plus one, our intuition or feeling. Military theorist John Boyd introduced the OODA loop, that's O-O-D-A, standing for observe, orient, decide, act. Uda is the decision cycle with which we respond to an event. The trick is to hone our observational skills to improve our situational awareness. Everything else, orienting, deciding, and acting, is based on a foundation of paying attention. There's nothing revolutionary in this. When you're out in the world, keep your head up. Engage your senses and stay alert, but relaxed. Sometimes it helps to wag your tail. <laughs> Note that anxiety narrows our focus, which is one, one place we get into trouble. And this, of course, is where I'll make a plug for meditation, which is the practice of keeping your head up, engaging your senses, staying alert, but relaxed, trying not to wag your tail. Meditation can yield the capacity to be the eye of the storm in a storm. We've all seen animals doing this or seen pictures of it. Recently, I was driving to Boston on Cerro Drive and saw a red-tailed hawk perched on top of a streetlight perfectly still. Without warning, it plunged straight down, swooping in a few feet in front of my windshield before it landed in the median, talons out. In my side view mirror, I saw it lift off again, dinner dangling below. Somebody forgot to look up. A more cheerful example, it makes me laugh every time when the luggage comes out and the dogs climb in. They totally get that something's up and they want to be sure they're not left behind. Pay attention. And what else? I'm interested especially in ways we might emulate animals that will enable us to live fully into our humanity. Ironic, I know to be more human, copy animals. Let's ask it this way. 
What sermons do the animals in your life preach to you? What sermons do the animals in your life preach to you? My dogs live these sermons. Stay in the present. Go along for the ride. Play hard. And rest. Some of you are lucky enough to have animal companions that would add, love everyone. I commend to you the book, The Soul of All Living Creatures, What Animals Can Teach Us About Being Human. The author is veterinarian Vint Verga. He writes, late one November afternoon in my fourth year out of veterinary school, while tending to the first wave of patients who had flocked to our clinic for emergency care, a dog in an unconscious haze forever changed the course of my career. Lying before me on a blanket was Pongo, a two-year-old flat-coated retriever struck by a pickup truck speeding by his front door. Pongo was no better for all that modern medicine and all my training had offered him. His vital signs ebbed fatefully weaker than when he'd arrived several hours before. Exhausted by the onslaught of the night's cases, I surrendered to a wave of frustration and hopelessness and sank to the floor with nothing else left to offer Pongo but my arm draped across his chest, soft words, and a gentle touch. In less than an hour, Pongo made a complete recovery. Dr. Virga went on to study animal behavior to discover what we can learn from them, such as the transformative power of compassion touch, and kindness. He adds two more things. First, altruism. Let's touch, touch on lessons of selflessness from the animal kingdom. This summer in Kenya, Cam and I were thrilled to see vervet monkeys in the wild. They're the ones who are white with a chocolate brown mantle and a black face. Something really interesting about vervet monkeys, beyond their stunning beauty, is that each of their troops has at least one crier monkey. The criers sound the alarm to warn their community of the presence of predators. Even, and here comes the part about altruism, even though in crying out, they draw attention to themselves and increase their chances of being attacked. Biologists have learned that troops with a higher proportion of crier monkeys have a survival advantage. What this means evolutionarily is the more altruism, the better. Dutch primatologist and ethologist Frans de Waal writes, evolution favors animals that assist each other. Let us take note. An extraordinary and deeply touching example of this was posted to Facebook by the farmers leading the Valet Black Nose Sheep Breeding Program at Bishop Family Farm in Crowley, West Virginia. Sad night last night, it begins. But today is a brighter day. One of our ewes lambed a stillborn, and we were unable to resuscitate it. After we removed its body, the mother cried most of the night, longing for her lamb. Another one of our sheep lambed twins last week. It seems that today she has given one of her twins to the grieving mother to raise as her own. This is a photo of them together with their new children. The photo brought tears to my eyes. Dr. Vint Varga also writes about the ways animals teach us to let go. 
He writes, while animals certainly suffer misfortune, misery, and grief, they move past them with greater poise than we humans do. The continuity of their lives takes precedence over reliving the past. When we find ourselves haunted by words and deeds, spoken or unspoken, done or undone, for our own good and for the good of all those whose lives our lives touch, we can seek to emulate the animals, releasing our suffering with grace and equanimity. That release can be hard. American author David Foster Wallace writes, everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. But the alternative is hard on the spirit, hard on the mind and body. There is a reason it's called the death grip. Letting go comes from strength, not from weakness. And we have lots of opportunities to build those muscles, to practice opening our hands and letting go. My closest reference point is dogs, but this is true of so many animals. Life is too short to hold grudges. If you don't have time to play, then move on. If you're short on patience, they give you space. And then three minutes later, they're back with a toy or a cold nose pressed into your hand. That was then. This is now. How about now? Grieving is also the work of letting go. Years ago, Gaby Whitehouse, who with George has led dozens of African safaris, taught me about elephants and grief. And then I read this story. Conservationist Lawrence Anthony, who lived on a South African reserve, stepped in to rescue a herd of 21 wild and unruly elephants who had been deemed too dangerous, too violent to be allowed to live. To save their lives, Lawrence determined I would stay with them, feed them, talk to them, but most importantly, I would be with them day and night. And he was. His book, which we loved, is The Elephant Whisperer. In March of 1999, Lawrence Anthony died of a heart attack. And then something remarkable happened. The elephants grazing in two separate herds in different parts of the reserve came to pay their respects. A good man died suddenly, says Rabbi Dalela Galberner, and from miles and miles away, two herds of elephants, sensing that they had lost a beloved human friend, moved in a solemn, almost funereal procession to make a call on the bereaved family. Lawrence's son, Dylan, says they had not visited the house for a year and a half, and it must have taken about 12 hours to make the journey. The first herd arrived on Sunday and the second herd a day later. His brother Jason adds, in coming up there on that day of all days, we certainly believed they had sensed it. The elephants remained in vigil for two days, then turned and headed back into the bush. That good goodbye is good grief and a little magical. Who among us has not traveled 12 hours to pay our respects and lingered at the home going? We are so much closer to animals than we know. Beloved spiritual companions, Animals have much to teach us about being human. These lessons and so many more. Pay attention. Stay in the present. Go along for the ride. Practice selflessness. Play hard, then rest. Remember the transformative power 
of compassion, touch, and kindness. Remember altruism, the survival advantage. Let go. Amen. And now for our benediction, I invite you to put your hands over your heart and namaste. I bow to the divine in you. President Abraham Lincoln, a great lover of animals, said, I care not much for a person's religion whose dog and cat are not the better for it. May ours be that religion. Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. I love you. Amen. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.